In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at stretching and reflecting quadratic relations. And to begin, we need to recall the effects of A in a quadratic relation. So if you recall from chapter three, vertical stretches are determined by the value of A. So when A is a number that's greater than one, the graph is stretched vertically. When A is a number that is less than one, the graph is stretched vertically and reflected across the x-axis. And you've heard words like the graph is opened up or the graph is opened down when A is positive or negative. So what I want you to do right now is just sketch an example of each of these properties. Vertical compressions are also determined by the value of A. When A is a number that is between 0 and 1, the graph is compressed vertically. But if A is a number between 0 and negative 1, it's still compressed vertically, but it's reflected across the x-axis. And once again, I want you to draw, sketch an example of each of these. And finally, as we just discussed, if A is greater than zero, the parabola opens upward. And if A is less than zero, the parabola opens downward. And if we look at the sketch given here, we can find the parent function in green. And if you recall, the parent function means that the parabola's equation is y equals x squared, meaning that A is equal to one. If a is equal to 1, the parabola opens upward because it's positive, and there's no stretch or compression. Another thing you might notice is where all of these parabolas' vertex is located. Each of these parabolas has a vertex that's located at the origin, which is at 0, 0. So we can conclude that a only affects the stretch or reflection of the graph, and that the parabola does not shift to the left or right or does not shift up or down. Anything in the form y equals ax squared will always pass through the origin. So today we're gonna be examining the effect of a in the equation of y equals ax squared to the graph of the equation. So to begin with, we're going to look at the parent function, the graph of y equals x squared. And I, what I want you to do right now is I want you to create a table of values to determine five points on the parabola. So I want you to do that right now. As we discussed earlier, we know that a graph in the form y equals x squared will always have its vertex at the origin. So that's the first point I'm going to put on my table of values, 0, 0. Now to determine the other points accurately, we can use the equation y equals x squared, or you can use your graph if you have Desmos open right now. You can see where each of the points lie. So if x is equal to 1, and I'm just going to choose points in order, if x is equal to 1, well, if y is equal to x squared, 1 squared is equal to 1. If x is equal to 2, well, what is 2 squared? 4. If x is equal to 3, 3 squared is equal to 9. I'm going to do two more points like this, 4 and 5. So if x is equal to 4, what is the y value? That's right, 4 squared is 16 and five squared is 25. And let's just verify that on the graph. If x is one, y is one, and we can see that point here. If x is two, y is four, we can see that point here. x is three, y is nine, and there's that point here. Once again, you can check this in the program Desmos, and you can accurately see each of the points. What do you recall about a parabola? It's a U-shaped symmetrical curve. So we recall from chapter three that the axis of symmetry in this parabola would be zero, as would be in any parabola in the form y equals x squared. 
And if we have the points to the right side of the vertex, then we know all the points to the left side of the vertex because this, like we said, this parabola is symmetrical. So if x is equal to negative 1, then y would be equal to positive 1. If x is equal to negative 2, then y would be equal to 4. All of the points will be symmetrical. So let's look for a pattern in our table. Starting at 0, 0, if we go over 1, we're going over to the right 1, we also went up 1. If we go over 1 again, and I'll show this to you on the graph, how many steps did I count upwards? We went up 3. Okay, so let me show you. Over 1, up 1. Then from this point, I went over 1 again, and I went up 1, 2, 3. If we go over 1 again, over 1, how many steps did I count upwards? Well, from 4 to 9, we go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so on. Over 1, up. From 9 to 16, we would go up 7. What do you notice about the step pattern? Think about this for a minute. Every time we go over 1, the amount that we go up by increases by how much every single time? That's right, it increases by 2. So we can count in our heads over 1, up 1, then up 3, up 5, up 7. What would be the next one? That's right, add another 2, up 9, up 11, and so on. We can actually graph y equals x squared by hand by using this step pattern. And I want you to take a minute and copy this down right now and check that your graphs match the step pattern. So now we're going to look at what happens when we're given an equation where a is not equal to 1. So the equation is not y equals x squared, but as an example, we'll look at y equals 3x squared. And what can you recall about what this problem might look like when you graph it? If a is greater than 1, what happens to the graph? Well, the graph still opens up because a is positive. a is positive, so the graph will still open up. But if a is greater than 1, what happens to the graph? That's right, it's vertically stretched, which means it's going to be skinnier than the parent function. So if I were to sketch this, I know that my parent function would look something like this, and y equals 3x squared would be skinnier. Both would still pass through the origin. Now what I want you to do right now is I want you to actually graph this equation and write down the coordinates and we're going to examine what happens to each of the coordinates. Now after graphing this in decimals you can see once again the parent function is in green right here and y equals 3x squared is stretched. It's skinnier than the parent function. So let's write down some of the coordinates that we have. Once again, I'm going to start at 0, 0 because the graph is in the form y equals ax squared, so I know it has to pass through the origin. And we're going to list some coordinates where x is equal to 1, and let's go from 1 to 5 again. Now think about what you would do to calculate this using the equation. We know that with bed mass, we must calculate our exponents first. So we're still doing, we're still plugging in x and calculating x squared. Well, what's What's 1 to the power of 2? 1. What happens now that a is not equal to 1? Well, we have to then multiply it by 3. So what's 1 times 3? Three? 3. So we can look at the graph and see that one of the points would be located at 1, 3, which would be right here. That's correct. What do you think is going to happen for the next point? Well, once again, if we plug in our x value, 2 squared is 4, but then we have to multiply it by a factor of 3. This is being stretched by a factor of 3, and I want you to write that down. Stretched by a factor of 3. So we're actually multiplying each of the y values by the number 3. So the next coordinate would be 2, 
12. And if we look at the graph, is there a point located at 2? And we'll go up to 12, 10, 11, 12, right here, 2, 12. What do you think the next coordinate will be? That's right, 27, 48, and 75. And if we compare each of the tables of values, we can also notice the pattern. Like we said, y equals 3x squared. Each y coordinate will be multiplied by a factor of 3. So you can use the parent function and the equation to determine the coordinates for the graph y equals 3x squared. Now let's see how this relates to the step pattern that we discovered earlier on. We know that the graph y equals x squared, we can graph it by going over 1, up 1, over 1 again from that point, up 3, over 1, and up 5. That's only if the graph is y equals 1x squared. What do you think we're going to do if the graph is, for example, like we just looked at, y equals 3x squared? Let's look at the graph and see if we can figure it out. So we went over 1, up 3 this time, and then up 9. Remember, how did our parabola stretch? By a factor of 3. If I take that factor and multiply each of these by 3, we will get the step pattern. So the next thing we'll count is over 1, up 5 times 3 is 15. So now we can say that the step pattern is over 1, up 1, times a. And this still works if a is 1, because 1 times 1, anything multiplied by 1, will still result in the same solution. So over 1 each time, up 3 times a, then up 5 times a, and so on. So this time, again, we're starting at 0, 0, and we're going to go over 1, but how many steps did we count upwards? 1, 2, 3. So there's the second coordinate, and then from there we go over 1 again, and up how many steps? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And that's the next point. So we went over 1, up 3, over 1, up 9. Let's look at the step pattern and see if you can notice a connection. So just to summarize, if a is equal to 3, then this means that the graph will have a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, which also means that the y-coordinates of the points on the graph will become greater faster. So the parabola will be narrower near its vertex compared to the graph y equals x squared. What do you think would happen if I changed the graph to y equals negative 3x squared? What I want you to do right now is I want you to create a table of values and I want you to graph this and figure out the step pattern. So I want you to do that all on your own now on a piece of graph paper and then you can check your answer using Desmos. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a lot today.